Hello everyone and welcome to Philosophy Friday. Today I'm here with my co-founder Avinash Pandey who is CTO of Leela Games. And today we're going to be talking about how to create a hit game or game studio out of India. And I wanted to have a frank discussion about this topic, get your honest opinions and for some context when I first came to India a few years ago, I was checking the top grossing charts, at least for mobile, and it, you know, was kind of scrolling down, scrolling down, looking for the first game that was in the top grossing charts, and I had to scroll into the hundreds, like 300, 400, 500, before I found a game in the top grossing charts from India. Today, checking the top grossing charts, we see Gameshin with Ludo King in the top, let's say, 150 grossing. So there's some improvement there. But in terms of when we think of other countries like China with companies like Fun Plus where I worked, MiHoYo, and um, other companies that are evolving now in China both in mobile as well as the AAA side, and we see Turkey with companies like Peak, Dream Games, and companies like that who are starting to emerge and meaningfully create hit games and game studios, I wanted to have this discussion about India. So to kick off this discussion, Avinash, I thought maybe we could first start by having you talk about the Indian gaming industry today. Yeah. Maybe with a stronger focus on free to play and mobile, but okay. for our audience who doesn't know that much about the Indian gaming scene, how would you mm -hmm. describe it? What is it like? All right. Uh, so, first of all, my career in gaming started uh, in 2008, so I'm not as old as Indian gaming industry, so my, I'll, I'll have my own perspective on it. Um, so. I think Indian gaming industry is still growing. It's not as mature as if you compare it with Western gaming industries. Right. So you will see that newness. You will see some of the common mistakes you must have seen or people must have seen in other gaming industries in their early days. Those, those might be there in Indian gaming industry. Right. The second thing which I could see from my personal experience is the way Indian gaming industry itself started. Yeah. So India, it starts from, like India was not a, it didn't have gaming culture. So the access to you know PS4, Xbox, and all these consoles were not very common in India. Okay. So you know, only few people had access to those. So India was mostly into like physical sports, but not on virtual sports. Right. With the advent of mobile, uh, most of the Indian community actually got connected to games. So th that's why people call India as a mobile gaming uh, country. Right. So in terms of gaming industry, uh, what I could see is many Western co uh, companies came to India to set up their studios, mainly for art, uh, support, or you know just doing some sort of co-development. Right. So anything, I, I don't remember any game which was built from scratch in early days of Indian gaming industry. So it evolved that way. So I, I also saw some companies coming out of those companies. So people who worked in those companies like in Zynga or any other Western studios in India and then they started their own gaming companies. Right. So it started naturally that way. Yeah. So that's why it's growing. Now I'm seeing many more studios where it's starting naturally. Like you know some developers, some gamers who love playing games, uh, who are very connected to the gaming culture and then they are building some games. Right. So I think the right way to start any company is always like, not your goal should not be to start a company, but you want to build some game which is not there mm -hmm. for players and then the result of this is like, hey, how do I do that? You know, start a company or start a studio, bring your friend in and then start building those things. So those things are uh, happening in India now. Right. So, yeah. yeah, maybe from my own perspective, I, I feel like a few things that I noticed about, not, not all Indian yeah. gaming companies, but uh, a, lar a large number of them is that when, we, when you look at like the strategy of a lot of the Indian gaming studios, mm -hmm. it seems like there's a strategy to do a lot. Right. So I would see even small game studios work on five and even sometimes ten games and, mm. and I would ask them, how is your small team of you know, 30, 20, 30 people trying to work on 10 different games? Right. And so then you see a development cycle that's like three months or six months. Yeah. And so a lot of the games that are being worked on are more casual in nature. Right. And based on that, I, in, I would say that we don't see a lot of the depth that you would see from other companies in other places in the world, like yeah. you know, where you see extreme depth in a genre mm -hmm. and you see longer um, longer development cycles as well as more concentration in terms of betting on one game at a time versus trying to have this large portfolio right. strategy where 
the philosophy is, hey, we don't know what's going to hit, so mm -hmm. we're just going to try and launch five games, ten games, and hopefully something hits. Right. And I, I think this is very well connected to the point I was talking about. Like, yeah. most of the companies were not started by gamers. So right. they must have had some other background coming from SaaS or any other industries. Right. So the core philosophy of building game might not be the the experience they have. So right. for them, it's a software. Yeah. So you know, there's gaming industry, uh, there's some sort of success. How can we be part of it? Right. So that's how many companies get started. Right. And they're like, hey, there's this famous game, maybe, you know, Karam or uh, right. something like that. Can we make that game? Right, right. And then they have some engineers. They'll say like, yeah, we can make it like in three months or something <laughs> like that because they have also not done it. Right, right. So that's how it starts. And then some other famous game comes in picture. They say, hey, can we make something like Candy Crush? Right. So then they will have five more engineers and they start doing that. So, so that, that's majority, I would say like, <laughs> Majority of the companies kind of fall in that category in right. India, but there are exceptions, sure. especially now right, right. where the market is opening up more. Right, and we are seeing more venture capital flow into India. Yes. We're seeing more the, the market start to merge, a little bit more professionalism in right. terms of best practices being brought here. But yeah. kind of speaking more on the upside of India, maybe more the positive aspect. Right. What do you think when you think about whether it's versus the US or China or Turkey. When you think about India, what would you say are some of the positive aspects of developing in India or some of the benefits that we will have trying to build a company here in right. India? I mean, first is always the cost structure. You know, mm -hmm. in building a game or a team sure. in India would be cheaper than right. other countries. There will be other options also, yeah. but that's one. The second one is, as we talked about, um, so Indian gaming industry is new. So there, uh, what I personally feel whenever I talk to uh, candidates and other gaming studios, like the aspirations are very high. Like right. it's not that people don't want to make great games. Right. It's just they are not getting opportunity to make great games. Because right. if the leadership decides like, hey, we want to make a casino game or something, some board game. Right. So they don't have a choice. Right. But there is this energy in, in developers, in artists to build something right. amazing out of India. Right. And if it, they get that opportunity, you will see the result in execution that, right. that we are seeing also. Like with right. some people, they are so motivated to build those things. Right. So I think that's that's one of the uh, thing. And the other thing is, uh, which I think started happening recently is uh, now people see games as a career option also. So earlier in India, gaming was not a career option. It was like something like entertainment. In colleges, even students were not aware like, hey, is, is can I make my career in gaming? So that started happening now. Right. And if you see the sheer volume of uh, engineers, developers, and just the talent in India. Even if the small percentage of people decide to go in gaming, right. that percentage would be huge. Right. So you know, that you will see that result in coming years where you will see many studios with really great talent. So. Yeah, and I mean, I agree with you. I think that for me, it just simplifies down yeah. to the people, right? Like we have a set of people here who are learners, who right. have high potential, who want to learn and who want to try to become the best. And it's not, you know, it's just like anywhere else in the world, yeah. it's not everybody, but right. the people that we, we can find and we can employ, it does seem like they have a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm to right. try and learn as quickly as possible. So yeah, I think that's also a very positive aspect. And then in terms of like, if you were to think about specific Indian gaming companies. Certainly there's, you know, I mentioned Gameshian during the beginning part of this, um, but are there any other gaming studios that you think we should be watching out for? Like ones you think have a potential of kind of breaking out and potentially becoming a world-class studio? So I think it will depend on the genre of games you would be looking at. Okay. Like if you are looking at uh, um, casual games, there are multiple studios. In casino, real money gaming, there are multiple studios. Right. It might be harder to find studios who are, who are in hardcore games. So in real gaming, you would know like, you know, um, MPL is doing good. Right. Um, I think in fantasy sports, Dream Eleven did really well. Okay. On board games, King uh, Ludo King is doing really well with their uh, Ludo game. Right. When I try to think about hardcore games, I think that space is yet it's to be open. taken. <laughs> <laughs> yet to be taken by some right. studios. Okay. But I feel if 
in in terms of you know what should you watch out yes. if somebody is trying to do something ambitious in india like you should watch out for that right because it's they might turn out to be you know one of those stores who out of the blue are like hey who made this game <laughs> so you know that that yeah yeah yeah, I agree with you. And it does seem like the ones who are more ambitious, like I, I know there's this game on the AAA side, Raj, the game where yeah. people talk about that. Raji. Raji, yeah, yeah, sorry. And um, and so like maybe kind of getting to the meat of this discussion, yeah. if you were now to think about, so what is it going to take? How do we build the next Fun Plus, MiHoYo in China, the next Dream Games in Turkey? Right. How does India create its next big game studio, or next big game? What is, if you were to try to identify the top two or three things that India needs to do as a gaming ecosystem to try and help create that hit new studio or game, what do you think needs to happen? So I think there won't be a specific formula for India. Okay. I think to build a successful game or successful company, the amount of work or the framework needed is same whether you are building a company in India or anywhere else yeah. so what is what I can talk about is uh, what might be missing in Indian gaming uh, companies and what they can do to actually become the successful companies yeah. and I think most of the people are aware of that so we already talked about like you know trying to do something ambitious something unique is the first step okay. like uh, it's uh, it's also uh, you know there is this book called infinite game so you yeah, know if okay. if you try to do something ambitious it creates a culture of everybody being okay right. that hey you know we can build a shooter game because then there's one more company in india which build that game or sure. some mmo or something like that right. so that's one then thinking deeply about the complexity of games mm -hmm. so you know what i have found lacking is uh, people have a very uh, bird eye view on what it takes to make a good game but that's not uh, what is needed to build a game like right. building a game is very very complex sure. like uh, building a top dosing game right. especially or uh, or um, hardcore or whatever right. So the companies should focus on processes, right. should po focus on best practices right. and uh, if required like you know I, uh, what I really like about Leela is that you are bringing that experience. Mm -hmm. So what Indian gaming, uh, gaming industry has to do is avoid those mistakes. Right. So like if you look at any successful studios, their first game was not that successful. Right. They learned over the period of time. Right. So if India, Indian gaming industry or gaming companies want to be successful, how can they avoid those mistakes right. and the good part is those mistakes are there like and people are open to talk about them people are open to uh, mentor so like you know you came here from that uh, point of view that hey you want to create a learning organization mm -hmm. where you can teach whatever experience you have like you know mistakes to be avoided right. so i think those are very very critical things it's, it's it's not only like, hey, let's build this game, get into it, uh, <laughs> just copy, you know, screen by screen. Yeah, yeah. Even copying a good game is not easy. Right. Like you can copy the screen, you can copy buttons, you can copy the flow. But what exactly is working in that game right. that needs that deeper expertise? Right. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe if I can um, kind of, you know, kind of extend some of your thinking, like you, know, you mentioned the complexity of games. Yeah. And I, I hope that's something that for, you know, Indian game developers who may be watching this, take to heart is that that strategy of trying to launch three, four, or five different games from one studio and not being deep enough, like not only yeah. the processes, but really understanding game genres very, very deeply and trying to concentrate and focus and have more depth, I think, is going to help the Indian gaming industry become more successful yeah. over time. I think also um, when it comes to the type of talent, certainly a lot of really great engineering talent mm -hmm. here in India, but it does seem like on the design side, there's a little bit more depth yeah. when, when we talk about design talent in other locations, whether right. US or Israel or you know, Turkey. So, so I hope that uh, more people in the Indian gaming industry would try to become game designers yeah, yeah. and to learn design in a more fundamental basis. Right. And then I, I would say like the final thing for me is that the history of the Indian gaming industry, at least on the mm. mobile free to play side, had been kind of from Zynga, from right. EA, from Glue, where there's a largely like live operations mentality, right? So there's been like declining games in the West, it gets kind of punted over to India, and then the, it's live operated. Mm -hmm. But then the mentality, if we want to see a big hit new game coming from India, is to understand the differences between 
building a hit new kind of zero to one game development approach versus the content cadence in the regularity and stability of live right. ops. And so kind of shifting that mindset, I hope would, if more people learn about it, more people study it, then I, I hope that that would also increase the chances of big hit new games coming yeah. out yeah. as well. I think one thing I can add to that mm -hmm. is uh, about the, you know, going deep in, yeah. in your game design, in yeah. understanding the complexity of game. One thing I think, uh, especially the leadership of Indian gaming industry struggles with is FOMO. Like if there are, there is some famous game and they are building something, they are like, mm, maybe you know this game is better than this game. <laughs> but you know, uh, one day we were talking about some mass 3 game. Like yeah. mass 3 is a very crowded market and now building a mass 3 is like almost a suicide mission. Right. But some game came out and it like completely... Yeah you know, washed out Royal everything match. else, yeah. Royal Match. Yeah. So you can still do good in an existing category, existing genre, even existing gameplay. Yeah. If you go really deep and try to innovate on that and do a bit, get better job. Right. So FOMO is, a, <laughs> is, is the enemy. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Avnash, since you're Leela CTO and you've got kind of a technical orientation, right. do you, is there anything more technically that you could speak to in terms of if you think that Indian gaming studios should focus on um, anything from a technical perspective, what would you say that would be, if, if anything? Oh yeah, I, I mean I can share the mistakes okay. and uh, from my personal experience, uh, yeah, so and this is also uh, f not only for studios but for engineers as well and I'm, I can talk more for engineers rather than new artists and designers. Okay. So one thing I find missing is just the focus on processes and automation. Okay. So. Uh, um, like many studios they just you know uh, uh, they just do things on the go like hey let's start building the game architecture and everything we'll figure out later process we'll figure out later you know build automation there are so many things which you can establish once these are the process which you have to do once mm -hmm. but they will save so much time in in a longer process so one example is just the build automation okay. so you know uh, what i have seen even th from my experience like many studios they just make the build uh, on their game engine so like okay. developers are making build in x code you know and write studios whereas if you just spend a week there are so many tools now like you know jenkins is there github action there are so many uh, tools you can use just to automate that right so and that will save so much time Right. For your engineers, for your studio, and then you can have a better build process, better testing process, everything else. Right. The other one is uh, uh, when you look at uh, these processes, so generally in the start they seem like waste of time. Uh, one of the process I can talk about is code review, let's say for example. Yeah. So in code review, uh, if some engineer does something, you know, it looks like, hey, it looks what we are expecting, it's fine, let's, let's just keep merging it to the okay. main thing. But if you don't see how your code base is increasing, over the period of time you will end up paying so much cost, right. like you know, you release the game, you push some change, then everything else breaks. Right. Or you know, something breaks which you don't even know. Right. Or your QA cycle is so long. Yeah. So all these things can be avoided by just having a good code review process. Right. Where you know, you just define your standards, have a process, it just takes a couple of hours you know, per commit or whatever, but it can save you so much effort. So this is like one of the examples okay. uh, I can give. And maybe uh, the final question here, just to kind of wrap it up, yeah. up, is like in terms of people. And we've t spoken a little bit about the people in India, but if you were to try to describe, maybe in your opinion, right. what might be some of the differences between some of the um, Indian game developers or people in gaming companies here in India versus maybe in mm -hmm. the West or other countries, what would you say some of those differences are? So one thing I wanted to actually cover in my previous answer, which mm -hmm. actually is related to your question now. Okay. In India, the uh, culture of direct feedback and open communication is not common. So, like, if I have to tell you, like, hey, you yeah. it's are not, not common anywhere though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I can tell from my experience here. Okay. So, yeah. like, it, it might happen that people might take it personally. Right, right, right. So, and because of that, people don't have those kind of conversations. Sure. So, it's not common. Right. So that's uh, that's one thing I noticed. Like, you know, people might take it in a very sensitive way or something like that, which is completely not required. Sure. Like, in a work environment, like direct communication and direct feedback opens so, so much potential right. for right. growth yes so uh, that 
the other thing especially what i have felt uh, missing is you know uh, recently you know I, I i think times of india they were asking me how's the talent in india for gaming mm -hmm. and i just shared real numbers so you know i i personally interviewed more than 300 engineers and we were only able to hire three or four right and one common thing i found missing is just the understanding of fundamentals right so people who are coming in game development all these game engines like unity unreal they make it very easy to do something right. pretty quickly right. like if you want to uh, do some feature you do google you will find some tutorial you get it done it's done right. but that's not enough to build a complex game or that's not enough to build something from scratch right. so even if you ask basic questions like hey how does this actually work right. like that that understanding is missing right. so that's why i would always advise like uh, you know focus on fundamentals and don't restrict your learning to your work mm -hmm. so uh, i completely uh, you know align with uh, everybody that you know their work doesn't allow because you know this again if we uh, think from first principle it comes down to hey, companies are building simple games right. so how would an engineer learn how to build a complex game right. but that to some extent is could be an excuse also right so build complex prototypes build, build com nobody's stopping you building a shooter game like you can in your part time you can just build those challenging problems yeah and i, I got to agree with you in terms yeah. of that aspect which i which i think should improve over time yeah. but like understanding the fundamentals really questioning why things are happening so yes. when i interview people it's like if i were to interview a pm and ask them okay you know if i were to ask them about a scrum development process right. why 2 weeks versus 1 week versus 3 weeks why would we have complexity based upon right. time or story points or some other so, some other uh, form and so like having people just fundamentally question how they're doing things and thinking about the differences why you know right. if i were to ask people the different metaphors of different pm tools they couldn't tell me because they haven't really thought about it in a deep and fundamental way or even if i were to ask a you know lead engineer what kind of code process or code review process should right. we use? Should it be peer based? Should it be lead based? Should it be something else? Yeah. And then they're like, well, we just did it that way in our other company. But why? Right. Which situations would one be better than the other? And so I, I would say that, you know, I agree with that yeah. feedback. I would say the positive that I've seen in India is that, you know, time and time again, I realize people are people. So yeah, whether yeah. we're in the US or Canada or Germany yeah. or India, there's good people, there's bad people everywhere, there's people who are you know, really fantastic here. And I think that what, what I've been very encouraged by is just um, you know, the friendliness, friendly atmosphere, you know, talking to a lot of people in the games industry. I think that's universal and global that a lot of people in the games industry are a little bit more open, a little bit yeah. more friendly. And, but maybe you know, one other point of, one other point I would raise where I hope could get better is that I do think that to your point, about maybe like some cultural norms where it, it does feel like some people don't feel as comfortable like reaching out and creating this, this notion yeah. of tribes. Like in oh, the yeah. US, <laughs> you know, I've got a group of, you know, certain types of people who I mm. speak to about different things, right. right? So like different private communities, different people. I'm just now trying to start a gaming HR tribe where, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting HR leaders and we're talking about different HR issues here. Yeah. But uh, I do hope that in order for the Indian gaming industry to grow faster, right. like for more gaming industry people to share best practices and share yeah. things because you mentioned the infinite game, right? It, 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 the gaming industry, there's so much opportunity. Right. It shouldn't be about Indian gaming companies trying to battle each other. It should right. be about yeah. India rising and yeah. competing on a global stage. Completely agree. And that's very, very important for innovation. Right. And if you want to uh, be one of the top countries in gaming, right. then uh, in, we cannot skip innovation. Right. So we have to create something original. For that, all of these things are really important. And maybe one last point I'll make about kind of like people, but also kind of like game yeah. studio is that um, I do hope, and I hopefully people from the Indian gaming industry don't take this wrong way, but like I do feel like to be really successful, you always want to be more hands-on and to kind of really understand what you're working on. Yeah. It's hard for, in my opinion, to effectively manage somebody if you haven't, haven't never done that job or don't know the job. And so kind of like what I see in some game 
Indian gaming companies is like bigger teams right. where do you really need to be that big? And then yeah. there seems to be this desire after like five years to become increasingly more of a manager yeah. that then stops doing work and it's like, okay, what'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? Okay, all right, all right. and then just kind of manage. And so when I, I've noticed that when I interview more senior people, mm -hmm. Oftentimes they're worse than the junior people because they forgot how to do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of my recent interviews, yeah. the candidate was, uh, I think he had four years of experience and he was a team lead. Okay. So I asked him like, how much time do you spend in coding? So he said like 20%. Right, right. So like you are a stage of your career where you should be doing 100% right. time in coding. Right. So yeah, I totally agree with the point you made. All right, well, I think those are all my questions. Avinash, any final words of advice or thoughts about the Indian gaming industry as we also personally yeah. want to try to make a hit gaming studio here in India? Yeah, so you know, all the uh, things we talked about, we are aware of them, and th those are the practices which we are uh, following personally. And as our company value, we are very open to share our learnings. So, you know, any gaming studios, they want to talk to us, you know, create a tribe. I also personally trying to create a, a tribe of uh, technical leads in different companies so that so that as a whole we can be better and I'm hoping to see like really really great games coming out of India very soon all right guys that's it for this time so until next time catch y'all later bye